If you've been 3D printing for any amount of time, you're likely familiar with Polymaker, an awesome filament manufacturer with a massive catalog of materials ranging in color and properties. They're always expanding, and a few months ago we looked at their PPSCF, a great high temp option, though it requires a printer that can reach above 300 Celsius. So I was really intrigued when they reached out about a month ago asking if I was interested in testing out a new PLA. The initial email had very little detail, but they made it clear that there were no strings attached, so I agreed to check out this new material. Well, this filament ended up being High Temp PLA or HTPLA that they officially launched publicly this past week, and I've had a few weeks to play around with it. In today's video, we'll be diving into Polymaker's HTPLA. We'll go over what's required to print with it, take a look at their testing data, and I'll share my overall thoughts based on my time with it so far. So with all that being said, and without further ado, let's get right into today's video. Let's start out by taking a look at what this material is and some of its properties. Polylactic acid, or PLA, is without a doubt the most common and popular filament out there, and for good reason. It comes in a wide variety of colors, and I think most would agree that it's the easiest material to print with. It has low warping, prints at low temps, and other than maybe a few edge cases of machines that have heat creep issues just due to their design, can print with any machine on the market, even those that don't have a heated bed. With its many pros, it does have some cons, with one of its biggest ones being its sensitivity to heat. If we look at Polymaker's TDS for their standard Polylite PLA, we can see using the ISO 75 testing method at 0.45 megapascals that the heat deflection temperature is 60 Celsius or around 140 Fahrenheit. ISO 75 tests how a material deforms under heat and pressure, a key metric for real-world applications. Because of PLA having a fairly low heat deflection temperature, it's not uncommon for parts to warp or deform in the car on a hot summer day, in a warm garage, or when placed outside. Thank you to PCBWave for sponsoring today's video. With over a decade of experience, PCBWave provides reliable, high quality PCB prototyping and fabrication with super fast turnaround times. In addition to PCBs, they offer CNC machining, 3D printing, sheet metal fabrication, and injection molding services. I recently used their SLM printing for a 3D printed tool head, and the results were fantastic. Whether your project is big or small, PCBWave has you covered with order quantities from 5 to 10,000 boards. Use the link in the description to get a $5 credit towards your first order today. HTPLA aims to solve this issue by increasing the temperature that PLA printed parts can withstand. With Polymaker's HTPLA, they provide two different values, one being the VICAT softening temperature, hopefully I said that correctly, and the other being the heat deflection temperature. Knowing these values and what they mean will help to ensure that this is the right material for your application. Let's start with the VICAT softening temperature. The product page says stable up to 150 Celsius. And if we look at the TDS, we can see this value is right at 152 C based on their testing. This value is telling you the temperature at which the part will deform under essentially no load other than the weight of itself. This testing method uses a small point load and measures when the material softens enough to deform by one millimeter. 152 Celsius or just north of 300 Fahrenheit is pretty dang impressive. But again, this is roughly the temperature at which HTPLA will deform by just sitting there. This value is really useful for anyone printing parts that will be used in a car, garage, outside, or in any other warm environment. I remember hearing on more than one occasion of someone who had their cosplay props in their trunk or in their car outside of a convention and had them melt. So this is an excellent choice for something like that. The next value we have is heat deflection. We saw earlier that for Polylite PLA, this was 60 Celsius. And looking at HTPLA, we can see that right off the printer, this is increased to just shy of 70 C at the same 0.45 megapascals. If my math serves me correctly, that's approximately a 16.66% increase in heat deflection with no post-processing. Like most materials designed for higher heat resistance, there are some trade-offs primarily in the mechanical properties. For just about all of the mechanical tests, HTPLA scores lower, with the biggest hits being a 50% decrease in Z tensile strength and a similar drop for elongation at break in X, Y, and Z. 
Depending on your application, this might not matter, but it's something that you'll need to at least be aware of. For those that want to push the HTPLA even further, you can anneal the parts that you print with it. Annealing is the process of taking the material above its recrystallization temperature for a set amount of time before cooling. This is something I got to play around with a little bit many, many years ago, and I've been really wanting to set up sort of a dedicated annealing oven ever since. Let me know in the comments if that's something that you might be interested in seeing. Maybe that will be the flame that I need to finally go out and make it happen. In that same HTPLA TDS, we can see the new values that you can achieve for heat deflection with the parts being annealed. The 0.45 megapascals sees a large jump from 69.9 to 106.5 Celsius. In addition to the HTPLA, Polymaker also released an HTPLA GF or glass filled. I really need to get in some of that power tool green so I can make mounts for my Ryobi tools, but the main thing I want to show you is the heat deflection of the material printed and annealed. Here we can see at 0.45 megapascals, we get a heat deflection temperature of 75 Celsius off the printer, and a much higher 114.7 Celsius after being annealed. The test at 1.8 megapascals also shows a sizable jump, from 57.8 when printed to 84 Celsius after the annealing process. Now that we know a fair bit about this material, what's actually required to print with it? Well, the good news is, not a lot. If we look at the print settings recommended on the product page, it's really the exact same as a standard PLA profile. If you've printed with PLA and have a good PLA profile, you have exactly what you need to print with this material. The settings are the exact same for the glass filled variant, with the only difference in requirements being that you'll need a hardened nozzle because it is abrasive. I started my first print in HTPLA by running a Benchy on my Bamboo Lab A1 Mini using the generic PLA profile. The main issue that I noticed was that there was some stringing. The default temp for this profile and often what I'll print it at is 220 Celsius, but in this case I dropped it down to 210 and reprinted the Benchy. This showed some serious improvement, and the main thing I'd play around with a little bit more is just the retraction settings to dial it in a bit further. I also tested this filament out on the H2D starting at 220 Celsius, but once again, I ran into a bit of stringing. On that printer, I just dropped it down by 5 Celsius, and that seemed to pretty much get rid of all of the stringing. PLA is one of the few materials that, generally speaking, I never dry. I live in a low humidity area, and it just hasn't really ever been necessary for me. But there is a recommendation on the product page to dry this material for 6 hours at 60 Celsius if it's absorbed moisture. Now, stringing doesn't necessarily mean you have a moisture issue, but it certainly can be a byproduct of wet filament. So I took the roll and threw it in my poly dryer to dry overnight. In the morning, I fired off the initial bench again at 220 Celsius just to see if there was much of a difference in stringing, and I would say that it was almost identical. So I ruled out the moisture issue and just moved forward with that slightly lower temperature. Some of my immediate use cases for this material are accessories for the car and parts for my garden. There's a self-watering seed starting model over on printables that I really like, and I printed out a handful of them last year. They worked amazing, my plants all started to grow really nicely, but when I went to harden them off outside, the parts warped like crazy and it completely destroyed the prints. I also recently added automatic drip irrigation to all of my raised beds and the different grow bags, and I've been printing out a ton of drip stakes and little tube connector holders out of PETG, but I'm now going to be switching over to HTPLA. While there's nothing wrong with PTG, and it's a great choice for this application, I do occasionally run into moisture issues with it, and if there is one filament that is going to blob up on me and create just a mess, it always ends up being PTG. The one big benefit that PTG has over HTPLA for outdoor prints is its ability to withstand UV exposure. I saw quite a few people asking about this over on Twitter, and Polymaker replied that the UV resistance of HTPLA is the same as standard PLA. For my specific garden outdoor applications, the stakes and little tubes are pretty much entirely buried under mulch, and the hardening off of the seedlings is just a temporary you know, few days while I put them outside. So if you're going to be printing something and it's going to be outside exposed to the sun constantly, then 
PTG is still going to be your better option. The garage at my house is insulated, which is really nice, but for years while I was renting, there was zero insulation in the garage and it got brutally hot during summer. So if you have a hot garage, or if you live somewhere with a really warm garage, this material would also be awesome for printing things like power tool holders, which is one of their sort of recommendations or different things like pegboard accessories. Other than the tiny bit of stringing that I was able to correct by just lowering temperature, the HTPLA has printed beautifully for me. And if I didn't know that it was HTPLA, it prints just like regular PLA. While this filament isn't going to be replacing ABS or ASA, especially for my more demanding projects, it's a welcome addition to the materials that I regularly print with. And I love how accessible it is as far as its printing requirements. I can see a lot of people who regularly print with PLA but don't necessarily need the added mechanical properties of standard PLA switching over to this material even if it's just to ensure that it's safe during transport or that there's no risk of the parts getting damaged or deforming in an environment with elevated temperatures. And that's been Polymaker's new HDPLA. I hope that you enjoyed this video and that you have a better understanding of what this filament is what some of its potential use cases are, and whether it makes sense for your specific application. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments down below and I'll do my best to answer. And as always, if I don't know the answer to your questions, I have no problem reaching out directly to Polymaker to try to get those answers for you. On that note, don't forget to like and subscribe for more great videos. We make a video just about every single week, so there's always fresh content coming your way. And if you want to support the channel further, I'll have links in the description over to our Patreon, where there are some really awesome rewards. Huge thank you to all of our existing Patreon supporters. I appreciate each and every one of you for allowing me to come back every single week and spend more time doing what I love, which is making content for you all to enjoy. On that note, this has been Daniel from ModBot. I look forward to seeing you guys in my next video. Peace, guys.